Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with something of a confession to make. I am a junkie for that useless crap sold on TV. From baby mops to mattress gun racks, I've bought it all. But all you out there in the nation know, I don't buy anything without a dividend stock to pay for it. So here are the seven highest paying dividend stocks that paid for my sold on TV addiction. Now, as they say, but wait, there's more. Stick around and I'll show you how to boost your dividend payments even on these high yield stocks. We're starting off with one of the highest yields on the list. Ellington Financial, ticker EFC, and its 13% dividend yield. EFC is unique among high yield lenders for its breadth of investments. Most high dividend BDCs or M rates focus on just one type of loan. For example, mortgage REITs borrow on those short term rates to invest in long term mortgages. Business development corporations, those BDCs, they make those short term loans to mid sized businesses. But EFC does both with investments in mortgages, consumer loans, and other asset backed loans, as well as investments in other loan companies. You see that in the credit portfolio here on the top, with about $2.5 billion in residential and commercial mortgages, but also with hundreds of millions in other types of loans and types of debt. That does a few important things for the company. One, it just gives access to more different yield opportunities, all the way from 7.7% yield on more residential mortgages, all the way up to 22% yield on collateralized loans. It also helps reduce the volatility around the company's book value, though, compared to maybe other M REITs or, or other BDCs that only hold mortgages, so it's a more stable cash flow. Founded in 1994 with just over $10 billion in managed assets, EFC has a history of preserving book value even through these down markets and, and has produced a 15 year return of 8.4% annually. And I needed that higher dividend yield for one of my more expensive late night treasures this 1000 watt portable steam sauna for $140. The infomercial said it would have been featured on The View, which, if it's good enough for Whoopi, it's good enough for me. Now wherever I'm at, I am minutes away from a quick steam. And on a 13% dividend yield, that means just investing $1,000.76 in shares of EFC paid for it all. Next up is another real estate investment trust here, Global Net Lease, ticker GNL, paying an 11.4% dividend yield. I like GNL here for its internationally diverse portfolio versus what you usually find in REITs. Now, most REITs are almost exclusively US focused, but here you have 309 properties, more than 39 million square feet across the US, Canada, and Europe. Properties have a 99% occupancy, which is extremely high, and spread across 138 tenants in 51 industries. So here you've got that diversification. Not only is it geographically, but risk is spread out, so a crisis in any one industry isn't going to hit the stock. I also like that 54% of the portfolio is an industrial and distribution segment, a, a huge growth market for real estate. GNL leases to good credit companies like FedEx, Merck, and Johnson Controls, with long term leases here of 10 plus years, so this is a very stable cash flow company. And that's driven historical revenue growth of 7.4% a year and supports a strong dividend. No family with a dog can be without what could be the biggest invention since the printing press, the puff and fluff dog dryer. For just $50, my dog may hate me, but she's always clean and dry. With that 11.4% dividend yield from Global Net Lease, it's just $438 invested for that $50 total dividend over the 12 months. We're just getting started on our list of highest paying dividend stocks, but before I get a lot of hate in the comments, understand there's a difference between the, the highest yielding stocks and the highest paying stocks you should buy. For example, shares of Esports Entertainment Group, ticker GMBLP, pay a tempting 36% dividend yield, but if you look closely, it might not be a bet you want to make. The stock has only paid dividends for about a year and has already cut the payment by 33%, from 12 cents a share down to just 8. The company is losing $100 million a year and trying to pay out $700,000 on top of that. Nation, I know it would be great to think you'd get that 30% plus cash return on your money every year, but most of these high yield dreams are just nightmares waiting to happen that are going to lose your money before cutting the dividend. That's why for our list, I filtered for only those dividend stocks that grew their payouts over the last five years. I also filtered for companies with over $500 million in market cap, just to keep us in those with enough financial flexibility to survive any recession, as well as a healthy balance sheet and a strong outlook. So these might not be the very highest dividend yields. They are the highest I would recommend though, but let me know in the comments below if there's a dividend stock you think should have made the list. Starwood Property Trust, ticker STWD, with its 9.4% dividend yield is also a real estate lender though it does own some properties and has recently started lending in infrastructure projects. Now understand we're talking about each of these high dividend stocks as if they were separate investments, but I hope you can see how putting a few of these together is 
really gonna spread out your risk in different types of yielding companies and investments. I really like the infrastructure lending component of Starwood and think it could be a great growth driver over the years to come. Starwood still has 64% of its loans in commercial real estate and 26% of that portfolio in international real estate. Nearly all of this, 99% of the loans are in floating rate terms, so adjust higher for inflation and interest rates. Now that's helped it keep that dividend consistent, even in last year's sell-off in real estate. In fact, Starwood has over 1.6 billion in unrealized property gains on its portfolio, a fact that protects the dividend even in that cash flow falls temporarily. Shares of Starwood came in handy when we moved to Tampa. It was smack in the middle of hurricane season and rained constantly. Lucky for me, I had my umbrella tie, looking stylish and keeping us dry at a moment's notice. For just $35 or $372 invested in Starwood, now, if they just make an umbrella bow tie. Our next high paying dividend stock, Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW, is one we've followed for a, quite a while on the channel. MPW is the second largest owner of hospitals in the world with 442 properties and a rare international exposure for a REIT, operating in 34 US states and nine countries. It's about 60% of the portfolio here in the United States, but, but also 22% in the UK and throughout Europe. Healthcare is one of the few sectors that is gonna benefit from the trend in aging. With over $3.8 trillion in healthcare spending in the US alone, more than half of that goes to hospital care or physician services. It's a figure that is only gonna to continue to grow and MPW is gonna be right there in the middle collecting rents. Now the shares did fall last year along with a lot of other REITs on those higher interest rates, but here also on the Medicare and health insurance reimbursements to doctors that, that failed to keep up with inflation. Now that spooked the markets on the potential for hospital bankruptcies, but MPW is very much protected from this because of its portfolio and, and how it sets up the business. The company operates on a sale leaseback and an absolute net lease strategy. This means it buys properties already used by those long-term hospitals and clinics, facilities that are gonna stay in place forever. Then, as part of the lease, the tenant pays all costs, including maintenance, utilities, and taxes. These are 10 to 20 year leases where MPW does nothing but collect the checks each and every month. MPW also has 99% of its leases building in an inflation kicker to annual rent, and no tenant accounts for more than 2.6% of the portfolio, so a bankruptcy even in one or a few isn't gonna hit the company. It's just a really solid long-term property type that is gonna continue to cash flow for decades. Shares of MPW are already up 34% since October and have a lot of upside beyond the 9% dividend yield. Now y'all know I love my son, but after a few weeks from the hospital, I was tired of having a freeloader in the house. Enter the most practical purchase I've made, this $25 baby mop onesie. He loves exercise, I hate cleaning, it's a perfect match, and the 9% dividend yield on shares of MPW, that's an investment of just $277, paid for in that first year. Now, unfortunately, I think the wife's conscience got the better of her, and she went out and bought a traditional mop. So, if anyone out there wants to buy a used baby mop and a semi-used baby, let me know in the comments. We've still got three more of our high yield stocks, but you know, I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. One of the most popular real estate investment trusts, Arbor Realty Trust, ticker ABR, pays a solid 11% dividend yield. Arbor is a direct lender to multifamily, senior housing, healthcare, and other commercial real estate properties. Multifamily projects make up about 83% of the portfolio, so that's a little on the high side here, but these are all agency-backed loans, so definitely the safety that you wanna see in a mortgage REIT. Arbor has grown that dividend by 16% annually over the last five years, and on sales growth of 20% a year. Even as the housing market cools down, prices aren't coming down that much, which should support rents and loan growth for the company. My dog wasn't embarrassed enough by the dryer, so we bought the poo trap for $40. Not only do we never have to pick up poop again, but it was worth it to turn our dog into some kind of S&M bondage nightmare. On the 11% dividend yield from Arbor, an investment of just $363 produced that $40 cash flow. Shares of Haynes brand, ticker HBI, has jumped recently, but which has brought the dividend yields lower, but it still offers an attractive 7.3% dividend. Now, retail apparel has had a tough few years, but Haynes brand is committed to that investor cash return. Their shares have paid a dividend for nearly a decade, doubling the payout with no dividend cuts. Now, the runaway inflation has hit apparel retailers, but the company has some of the strongest brands like Haynes, Champion, and Maidenform, and one of the things I really like about HBI is it owns 70% of the manufacturing it uses instead of outsourcing. 
and that's going to give it control over the supply chain and its costs. Shares trade for just eight times on that price to earnings basis, and adding it to your portfolio means you still get that high dividend yield, but get to diversify your portfolio from some of those REITs and the lenders that make up most of the list. When we moved to Florida last year, there was a lot of pressure to fit in. Fortunately, I found something that made me feel like a true Florida man. The backup gun rack mounts right under your mattress and helps protect your constitutional right to cotton sheets. Just $40 plus shipping and handling meant investing $547 in shares of Hanes Brands at that 7.3% dividend yield. I'll show you that last high yield stock next along with a strategy to boost your dividends on any stock. But first, I want to personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for that sign up link below. Altria Group, ticker MO, is a controversial one here, but still hard to ignore that 8.4% dividend yield. The owner of the Marlboro brand in the United States is driving hard to a smoke free future with heated tobacco and pouch products and has been able to keep revenue consistent despite a years long trend of lower cigarette volume. Altria also owns a 10% stake in beer maker Anheuser-Busch worth $10 billion for serious cash flow to support its dividend. Now, I can get a little sensitive about my hair, so I found the perfect solution with the Bobcat mullet, a $15 mullet headband. Yeah, I know some people wear these ironically, but the joke's on them because they look damn good. Now, there is a way to boost your dividends on any stock though, even a non-dividend paying stock into regular cash flow. This is called the covered call strategy and it actually lowers your risk in investing as well. The covered call strategy involves owning a stock and then selling a call option against it. And call options give the buyer the right to buy that stock for a certain price until someday in the future. For this right, they pay a cash premium to the seller. So then as the seller of the option, you collect that cash payment. You keep the stock until the call option buyer decides if they want to buy that stock from you at that price. But the beauty of this is, if the stock doesn't reach that price during that time period, you're going to keep the stock and the cash payment. So let's use Altria as an example. That 8% dividend yield is pretty paltry compared to the rest of the dividend stocks on our list, so I want to boost it just a little. If I go here to the Options tab, I see the call options for the stock. These are options for weeks, months, even years into the future. I usually like selling the January options each year. It's the most widely used month and it means I only have to sell options once a year instead of managing it each month. So with the stock price currently around $46 each, and if I scroll down here, I see the strike price for each option contract in blue. Now that strike is the price the options buyer is agreeing to pay for the stock and next to it you see how much the cash premium is paid for that option. So here if you want more cash payment you choose a lower strike price but this is going to mean that it's more likely the stock is going to be bought away at that price. For these $55 strike options I'm going to get 79 cents a share and the stock will have to run almost $10 higher before it gets called away. An extra 79 cents a share cash payment turns out to be another 1.7% dividend yield on the stock. Or I could sell the $50 strike calls for $1.91 each and make an additional 4.1% yield, but then that stock could get called away if it rose to $50 by January 2024. That's only about 8.7% higher than the current price and I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to probably go with the higher strike price and a little lower cash payment. This is a great strategy to make a little more money on your dividend stocks, but there are risks. I'm going to link to a full video to guide you through that covered call and four of my favorite option strategies in the description below, so check that out. Click on the video to the right for those five option strategies, a step-by-step -step to lower your risk, boost your returns, and make more dividends buying or selling call options. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.